Hello everyone and welcome to EduSurge Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjad Desai and welcome back to our CT console where we are going to see a very interesting scan. So as always, first we will scroll through the scan so that you can note down all the findings, the phases that we are showing you, right? So you can note down the phase that we have shown and the findings as they appear. And then we will discuss the scan as we always do, right? So you can have a look at the scan first. Look at the phase, look at the intestines, the organs. There are a lot of findings in this scan and that is why we are discussing it. So it's going to be an interesting discussion. And once we have seen everything, then we will go through the findings together. Right, so that is one phase. That is the second phase. Some very important findings. I have already said that this scan was very interesting. That is why we are discussing it. I hope you can identify some points that I am trying to highlight. When the final phase Right, so this is the scan. So let us see what you may have missed probably and what you may have identified very easily. So I am sure most of you have identified that there is an arterially enhancing lesion probably in the uncinate process. Okay, so this is the pancreas. So probably in the uncinate process or it is a node Okay, a lymph node in that area. Now, why I am saying a lymph node in that area? Because of one other finding that probably can be missed if the scan is not seen properly. Okay, and what that other finding is, is lesions in the duodenum. Okay, and that is why I showed all the phases properly because when you see the other phases, you can appreciate the small polyps in the duodenum, right? At least four or five we can see in this area. And now once you know that there are these small duodenal lesions, you can see one here, okay? So small duodenal lesions with a large lymph node which is arterially enhancing, can be a duodenal neuroendocrine neoplasm, right? So that is one differential diagnosis in this patient. So that is why this scan is very important because this scan initially was reported as an uncinate mass, okay? Now, if you label this as an uncinate mass, the differentials are only two. It's an uncinate neuroendocrine neoplasm or a metastasis to pancreatic uncinate process and hypervascular metastasis to pancreas are usually from kidney, okay? So, this patient had no history of RCC, okay? She had no history of RCC. So, this hyper-enhancing or hypervascular lesion could be an uncinate neuroendocrine neoplasm and is lighting like a light bulb or it is a lymph node. But when you consider that there are lesions in the duodenum, right, you can see this polypoidal lesion very nicely seen in the scan. Okay. So, there are lesions in the duodenum and this is where discussing the scans is important. Okay. Because very easily these points can be missed. Okay. But when you discuss you can come to these conclusions. So, whenever you see enhancing lesions in the pancreas, Think of lymph nodes, think of neuroendocrine neoplasm of the pancreas and think of 
metastasis from kidney okay rcc can present in this way okay so that is the most important part of this scan okay that there is small polypoidal lesions in the duodenum this one and that is why this lesion can be a lymph node in this area or it can be unseen at neuroendocrine neoplasm metastasis is less likely because the patient does not have rcc now for planning surgery in this case we have to look at the bile duct because if it's in the supraampullary area the polyps then a supraampullary duodenectomy can be performed so that is one area that you have to look for this is the bile duct the bile duct is not dilated okay there is no central ihbr and the bile duct is not dilated then you look at the arterial anatomy this is the celiac that's the hepatic artery as you trace the artery on the liver side right that's the hepatic there going towards the celiac but the left hepatic is not coming from there so the left hepatic is coming from the left gastric right here trace this vessel i'm going fast in these areas because we have already discussed how to trace hepatic artery in our radiology playlist so if you have not seen that please go through those videos on liver anatomy this is the left gastric which will open into the celiac right here so that is how trace it again left gastric and left hepatic so left hepatic is replaced right hepatic is coming from the celiac that is the gda gastrodotinal artery as you can see the bile duct is opening here probably no polyps below that region but we will be doing an upper gi endoscopy get a biopsy if there are facilities for endoscopic ultrasound and endoscopic ultrasound needs to be done for planning surgery of this node we need to see the portal vein bifurcation that's the portal vein the superior mesenteric vein bifurcation and that is the superior mesenteric artery okay now for planning surgery in these kind of cases you need to also have a look at the sagittal so you can see that is the superior mesenteric artery okay and that is the lesion artery looks free from the lesion but this is a very difficult area to operate you can see plane with the d3 seems to be maintained but it's going to be a challenging surgery so you can see plane with the aorta plane with the artery and the portal vein that's the artery okay that's the portal vein so plane with the artery and the superior mesenteric vein looks to be free plane with the duodenum may be involved okay so that is what you need to see while planning these kind of cases Also have a look at the coronal section in that area because the first jejunal vein, inferior mesenteric vein also needs to be protected, right? So this is the inferior mesenteric vein going up. That's the inferior mesenteric vein. This one. Opening into the superior mesenteric vein. This is the superior mesenteric vein, splenic vein inferior mesenteric vein okay so the inferior mesenteric vein is opening into the superior mesenteric vein right important to understand that's the jejunal trunk first jejunal vein okay so all these structures need to be identified and preserved and that's the main branch okay jejunal and the ileal trunks right all look free there is no change in the lumen. So, when we are operating this, the approach is going to be important. The same thing you can ever look at in the arterial phase as well. So, in the arterial phase, you can see the SMA. That's the SMA. Looks free. Celiac is quite far from the lesion, right? So, these are the structures that you need to study when you are planning surgery for this case. 
you know that once you lift the superior mesenteric artery and vein, the node is behind these two vessels, right? This area. So it may be an unseen head mass, it may be a nodal mass, duodenum may be involved. So these are some of the points that we need to remember. So when we operated this patient, the patient underwent a supraampullary duodenectomy with a lymph node excision. So this turned out to be a lymph node only and it was removed during the surgery by using an SMA first approach inferior. So we, what we do is we take control of the SMA and the SMV in this area. Then we dissect towards the mass, keep, lift, keep lifting the vessels and remove the node. The duodenum was free. Okay, so this patient underwent a supraampullary duodenectomy with a lymph node excision and is doing well. The diagnosis was neuroendocrine neoplasm grade 1. Okay, so that is how cases of this kind, a bit complex, a bit tricky, easy to miss the duodenal lesion. So that is a point to be remembered that usually duodenal lesions are small and they have a big enhancing node in the arterial phase. This is classical presentation of duodenal neuroendocrine neoplasm. Thank you.